as soon as you show someone how to set type on a circle, the very next question is invariably, how do you set type on a circle so that it reads upright at the top and the bottom? In this lesson, we're going to take setting type on a circle one step further to create this, which you can see in the Canes Fine Dining End file. It has text along the top and the bottom, and it's upright. So let's go back to the Canes Fine Dining Start that we've been working on. We've already set the first line of type on it. I've changed my font, I've made it italic, I've made it larger. This is what I want, this is closer to my end goal. Now what we've already seen in the last lesson when we first set the type on the circle is that should the type wind up on the bottom of the circle, it's going to be upside down. If you recall, we had to go to Object, Transform, Rotate, and rotate it 180 degrees. If I choose to rotate it 180 again, you can see it's upside down. We don't want that. I don't want people in the elevator looking at this sign and having to twist their heads upside down just to be able to read it. I want them to be able to read it right side up. So I'm going to undo that, and if we created the same circle again, we'd wind up with upside down text. So instead we have to do something different. Let's create another circle right on top of this one. So I've grabbed the ellipse tool, and I've lined up my crosshairs right on that intersection of the two guides. And then once again holding Option Shift or Alt Shift on Windows and dragging outward from the center, I'm creating a circle. But in this case, I'm not going to stop at the baseline of the text. This is step one of the two-step secret to getting text on the bottom of a circle upright. Take this circle and extend it out to the top of the first line type, the cap height or the ascender height. Then let go. You'll then have a circle. I'm going to swap the fill and stroke with Shift X. Then I'm going to select my type on a path tool again, and I will click at the very top of this circle. And because my text was already center aligned, my cursor winds up on the bottom. If yours is left aligned, your cursor will be on the top. Click the centered paragraph alignment button, and then I'll type in my text, fifth floor. That's where the fine dining restaurant is inside Cane's. Now again, you can see I've got it upside down, and it's set on a much larger circle than the first one. You may not have noticed that there are vertical blue lines coming off of this type on a path object. Obviously, the blue circle is the path the text is following, but there are vertical blue lines coming off of it. Three of them, as a matter of fact. At the top, you have the start and end brackets. If you hover your cursor over each of these vertical blue lines, your cursor will change to indicate what you're looking at. The first vertical blue line here is the start bracket. This is where the text would start if it were left aligned. You can drag that start bracket and change where that text starts, where the left margin is, so to speak. I'm going to undo that. You can drag the end bracket to change where that text ends. And if I drag it all the way around here till there's less space than the text requires and let go, you can see it oversets the text. Text in a type on the path object can only appear between the start and end brackets. I'll undo that again, and I'll undo my alignment change. So now I've got my text centered, and that third blue line is right in the middle, because that is the center bracket. If I clicked and dragged that, that would allow me to drag my text up to the top of the circle, so that it's no longer upside down. Rotating the path was the easier method, but this is the better method. It just requires a little more hand-eye coordination. Now in this case, I still don't want that. I don't want my text at the top. So I'm going to undo that. But I do want to manipulate that center bracket. So I'm going to hover my cursor over it again until I get the cursor with the little upward pointing arrow. That shows me this is the center point that I'm selecting. Then I'm going to take it and drag it straight across the line into the interior of the circle. See what happened there? My text on a path went from the outside of the path to the inside. And now it's aligned to the top again, which is, of course, a problem. So I'm going to go up to Object, Transform, Rotate, rotate it 180 degrees, and then I have my text along a circle on the bottom. And the baseline of this text aligns perfectly with the cap height of the text at the top. 
And that's how you put text at the top and bottom of a circle with all of it being upright instead of upside down. A couple of more changes, including a clipping mask to hide that little bit of the descender on the G and make it look like the text is behind the plate. And I've got a finished project.